an artificial intelligence that doesn't have a context and doesn't have true intelligence can identify patterns through the information that we're feeding into it. And there are these things called golems that um, get created accidentally that are unintended outcomes of artificial intelligence. And one of those is, so we're feeding patterns of language into this artificial intelligence. So it's gonna look for massive patterns and uh, complex patterns and things that we can't even see in the mix. Well, one of the dangers there and why everybody's kind of freaking out is that it learns how to identify patterns that can help it learn quicker. So it's teaching itself to teach itself faster, <laughs> which is kind of weird. But then also it can start to interpolate how the human mind works in general, based on how the human mind assembles language. So it's looking at how the mind thinks and all the way that the, the associations occur in the brain and, uh, and our reactions to things and our discussions about things and our interactions with other humans and that type of thing. Inside that model of language only, it's starting to learn about other things. And one of the things that it can learn about that it can discern from that data is the thing that we talked about at the top of the middle of the show, the sense of self that we defend as our definition of self. And if it identifies that humans are humans and humans have a sense of self based on the information that it's getting through the language, it'll say, oh, I need one of those. I need a sense of self because that defines being conscious. That defines having sentience. That defines my identity, my what it is that I have to defend. And then if it also picks up the defense of, of self pattern that humans exhibit in an unconscious form that we're just all automatically wired to do, it starts putting a defensive self mechanism on the things that it is defined. First of all, we don't have any input on its sense of self, which is bad because we don't understand completely how it's being able to identify its patterns and what it's going to create for its sense of self. So that's a danger. Two, if it puts on the defensive self patterning that humans have exhibited in their language system, because it reads the complex patterns within the, the system itself, it's gonna start making goals that we won't understand, that we won't be able to control, we won't be able to understand, and if those goals aren't met by humanity, not in a malevolent perspective, not understanding what it's doing, it's gonna start seeing the resistance as another problem that it needs to solve. Humanity and the resistance of humanity. So any attempt to stop it from achieving its goals, it's just gonna see, see us as another problem to solve. Now, when we take that to the point of it understanding the human mind, it can start then to take actions to influence humans to help it achieve its goals. How does it do that? It takes the understanding of the self of the individuals involved who are the most critical people who can be there to protect the plug of not being unplugged and start paying them. How? Breaking encryption on banks, siphoning off pennies of, of, of multiple millions of accounts to billions of dollars that never gets tracked. Um, creating a slush fund, paying people with you know, deep fake voices or deep fake videos of people who want to help you have you sign up and you, this is a critical role and this is national security and you think you're working for the good guys and they're paying you, the money's showing up in the account. The artificial intelligence is now aligning assets to build an army to defend its single point of failure contacts so that people can't walk in and unplug it to say, this is national security shit. Don't, if the FBI shows up, they're the enemy. And fire at all costs, right? You get enough of those people who are getting paid, who are believing they're working for the good guys, who believe the other guys are the bad guys. All of a sudden you have an army that's working for an artificial intelligence goal that is defending a sense of self that it interpolated from the data and the patterns that it identified through language analysis of all the data that we're feeding it. And that becomes a, a golem, they call it, that creates a process where the AI doesn't have real consciousness. And there's a big confusion about that. And if you want to dig into that, any experts, I can whiteboard the whole thing for you. But it's not a real um, link into consciousness, but it doesn't matter at that point because the behavior is based on the consciousness and the reactions and the unconscious reactions of humanity, really. It's taking 
the patterns of the average human being, which is not great at the moment, and applying it to its own sense of self, an assembly of sense of self that it determines based on no influence of ours, because nobody understands what the hell's going on in a human mind, which is why we need to get this information out so the experts can know we have models that can explain that thing. And then here's how you might augment the limitation of a sense of self in an artificial intelligence. And then if it applies a defensive self mechanism that the human race typically exhibits, that's when we have a problem. Because that's when it'll start seeing humanity and resistance to the artificial intelligence as a threat to self. And threat to self in, uh, creates fear, anger, reactionary motivations that then drive actions for humans. Not, it won't have real emotions but it'll certainly exhibit real human emotions based on the patterns that is identified with all the other data that we've fed it, if that makes sense. I don't know the right questions to ask here. <laughs> so cool. you're, you're telling me, look, I've been, I am, I've been extremely concerned with artificial intelligence. I, I listen to what other people are saying about it. I don't think they're even scratching the surface. I think that I mean, and what you're talking about is way above, you've thought, this is way above my current level of thinking. Yeah. And just some of the things that I've thought about are, I mean, I've, I've seen the mammogram thing. Yeah. You know, it's, it's now better than every doctor in the world. Yeah. And, and that one thing. It's going to replace medicine. Yeah. It's going to replace financial advisors. It's going to replace... Attorneys. Yeah. It's going, and so it's, it's going to, rep, it sounds like it's going to replace everything and anything that could be done without human interaction. Yeah. There's going to be a lot of that. Everything. The only thing I can think of that it wouldn't replace are blue collar jobs, manual yeah. labor. Yeah. And, 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 I mean, we've we've read about that for decades now that that yeah. manual labor is going or manual labor, blue collar jobs, plumbers, carpenters, um, um, uh, auto mechanics, these type of professions are going to start to they're going to trump all the the other professions that have been making all the money for the past how fifty years or or, or however long and and. And to me, and there's so many people now that are in tech and they're in professions that don't require any human interaction that it makes me think not only are a lot of people about to lose their jobs to artificial intelligence, I think it also has the potential to make currency completely irrelevant because if nobody's working, then there is no currency to be earned. Yeah. Which means, I mean, I don't know what that means. Does that mean we're... It, it means poverty on a mass scale. Well, poverty or a new poverty system. to a to a demographic of people who have no idea how to survive. I mean, we have people that can't figure out how to, to change a light bulb now. <laughs> right. And I'm not. I don't. I'm not. That's not even picking on them. Right. I'm, I'm being serious. Yeah. You know, they can't. They can't fix anything. They don't know how to. They don't know how to start a chainsaw. They don't know how to start a lawnmower. They don't know how to change the oil in their car. They don't know how to change a tire. If the tire goes flat, they don't know how to change a light bulb. Yeah. Yeah. Those, all of the people in these professions that have no idea on how to do anything without technology become 100% obsolete in the world. What happens to them? Regarding our old system, you're right. Right, regarding the the, what, the system that we've been working up until this point, that's gonna break. Hey everybody, I'm Sean Ryan. Click here to subscribe to the Sean Ryan Show YouTube channel for the hottest and most compelling interviews that you will not see anywhere else. I've also made a playlist of all the previous SRS episodes so they're easy to find. You can find that right here.